April 5th. You must be very careful, Margaret. It's the girl. Witness the birth. Bad things will start to happen. Evil things of evil. It's all for you. No, no, don't. The first omen, I believe, girl, is to be the mother. Mother of, of what? Is the most terrifying. 666 is the mark of the devil. Hey! Movie of the year. It's not real. It's not real. Who did that? The first omen. Rated R. Under 17, not a minute without parent. Only in theaters April 5th. This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 2114, Love Shows Up When You Do, by Melissa McCon with tinybuddha.com. Hello, everybody, and happy Monday. Thanks for starting your week with us here on ORD, where I, Greg Audino, read to you daily from different blog posts that can help you improve the relationships in your life. This time, we'll be hearing from Tiny Buddha, a really versatile website that has articles about all different facets of personal development and is read from on all the shows in our network, fittingly. So let's get right to today's post from them as we optimize your life. Love Shows Up When You Do by Melissa McGon with tinybuddha.com Quote, Slow down, and everything you're chasing will come around and catch you. That's by John DePaola. After six months of being single after my divorce, I wanted to date again. I was still afraid of failure and rejection, but I wanted to try. I felt the best way to get over it was to dedicate my time to finding someone new. I didn't know where to begin, but I knew I had a clearer understanding of what I wanted in a relationship. I definitely knew what I didn't want in a relationship. I thought if I could just find someone with the right qualities, happiness would follow. I made a long list of qualities I desired in a man. I signed up on internet dating sites, and I asked friends to set me up on blind dates. I thought I could get what I wanted by playing the odds, like sending out a hundred resumes for a job, hoping one company would call back. I felt I had learned from my past mistakes and was impatient to find true love. Six months later, after a string of bad dates, I was no longer closer to finding the love I desired, and the whiff of desperation seeped from my pores. I started to feel like maybe. There really wasn't anyone out there for me. So I decided to stop chasing. I began to take care of myself. I decided to be the person I was looking for, while at the same time creating a way for the right man to find me. I decided to remove all the clutter from my home and my mind. I threw out boxes and bags of clothes and objects that represented the old me. I wrote daily gratitude lists and stopped thinking about what I didn't have. I started going out to movies alone. I found new restaurants to try. I took long hikes in the woods. Once I took my focus off finding the right person, I started to find myself. I could sit for hours on my back porch reading a novel. I would buy myself chocolates and flowers for Valentine's Day. Once I was providing for all of my own needs, I started to smile again. This wasn't a race. It was my life. I intended to enjoy every moment of it with or without someone by my side. Around this time, I started to think about finding some new friends. I lost half of my friends during my divorce. I was looking for positive people to hang out with that would be interested in the same things I liked to do. I started joining book clubs and meetup groups. I went to exercise classes and asked co-workers out for drinks. I started accepting invitations to parties. Meanwhile, I still meditated. I still read on the porch, and I stopped looking at internet dating sites. I just wanted to have a good time and find some friendly people my age. I wasn't having a lot of luck in the friend department, though. It seemed like I was in a strange age group. When I joined clubs, most of the members were either a decade older or younger than me. I wondered why no one my age seemed to go out. I reasoned they must be busy with parenting and working a lot, like most people in their 30s and 40s. I just wasn't finding people my age. Then one day, sitting around the house doing absolutely nothing, I had an epiphany. I would start a group for people my age to meet and find friends. At the second meeting of my group, my future husband walked in the door. I knew I would marry him from the second I saw him. And yes, he has most of the qualities on that original list. If you're looking for love and feeling like time is running out, slow down. Breathe. Go buy yourself some flowers and stop trying so hard. Love comes to those who are at peace with who they are. 
Here are some tips for cultivating love while you wait for it to find you. Number one, if you build it, they will come. If you can't find what you're looking for, create a way for it to find you. I created a meetup group for people my age so I could meet friends in a casual atmosphere. Number two, be the person you're looking for. The best way to find love is to love you. Spend time exercising, meditating, and cultivating your self-esteem. When the right person does show up, a calm confidence will be far more attractive than fear and anxiety. Number three, stop and smell the roses. It's not a marathon. You're looking for the best person to show up, not the first person to show up. When's the last time you found someone who seemed panicked attractive? And number four, it's okay to dine alone. Many people are afraid to do couple things alone. Try going to a play by yourself. You can really have a good time just enjoying your own company. Take action toward your dreams, but then step back and let those conditions manifest. Enjoy life. And give yourself what you need instead of waiting for someone to give it to you. Meet each day with gratitude and joy in what you do have, and what you wish for will find its way to you. You just listened to the post titled Love Shows Up When You Do by Melissa McCon with tinybuddha.com. And be sure to stick around for my commentary right after this. Now, I am a big believer that if you want to be your best self in your relationships or in anything you do, you need to fuel yourself properly. And that's why I'm so happy to have this show sponsored by Factor. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. You'll have over 35 options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, upscale, and healthy options done easily. Not to mention it's flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing anywhere from 6 to 18 meals per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime with no hassle whatsoever if something changes. So, Head to factormeals.com slash optimal50, that's optimal50, and use code optimal50 to get 50% off. That's code optimal50 at factormeals.com slash optimal50 to get 50% off. Picture a wardrobe upgrade with quality essentials at an unbeatable price. Quince has you covered with timeless pieces that never go out of style. You'll have them in your closet forever. Quince has all the must-haves, like Mongolian cashmere crewneck sweaters from $50, iconic 100% leather jackets, and versatile flow knit activewear. And all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. That's because by partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us. And most importantly, Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices along with premium fabrics and finishes. And as for me, I love Quince's versatility too. They have great home items as well as clothes, and I've been really happy with the bedding that I bought from them. When you look at it and you feel the material, you can tell easily that it's of high quality. So indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com ORD for free shipping on your order and 365-day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash ORD to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash ORD. And thank you so much to Melissa for this great story, great guidance, great reminder, etc. A textbook example of how to navigate being single and frustrated, if you ask me. However, this is not a post to disregard should you be in a relationship. The type of self-work and self-attention Melissa talks about is important regardless. And that's because we're always going to change and grow as people, or we really should be. And when we are intentional about that growth and making deliberate time to be alone or considering new friendships or activities that interest us, it's easier to show our partners our evolution and stand to evolve with them. However, if we suppress this type of work, we stand a greater chance at either not having an identity outside of our, uh, of our relationship or bottling up desires to change parts of ourselves 
and potentially leaving our partners as collateral damage from that frustration. We need to continue to ask ourselves who we are and who we want to become and share this quest with our loved ones so that they can join us on it. So whether you're single or taken, think about how to integrate this post into your life. It's time to get out of here for now, everybody. But I thank you for coming and listening through to the end. Have a terrific rest of your day, and I'll see you again tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.